Very little written evidence of Dido's life exists, but she does appear in the household account books still held at Kenwood House, and I've been given special permission to see them. Well, I'm here in the glorious surroundings, this amazing neoclassical room, um, which is the library that Dido would have spent quite a lot of time in. What I've got here is some of the household accounts. And so in here, we do get some very small glimpses of Dido's life. Dido, quarter allowance due October the 4th, five pounds. So she was given 20 pounds a year, paid in quarterly instalments. Towards the end of the 1780s, Dido's allowance was also supplemented by birthday gifts and Christmas gifts as well. We can see one here to Dido at Christmas um, by Lord Mansfield's order. Now this one is probably my all-time favourite, washing and glazing Dido's bed. Now what that tells us is that uh, likely her bed was decorated with chintz hangings. Now chintz was glazed fabric and was very, very fashionable at this time as well. So it does give us a sort of insight into Dido's world, into Dido's life here. While the account books give us a tantalising peek into Dido's home life, we get a more tangible insight from the diary of Thomas Hutchinson, an American visitor to Lord Mansfield. A black came in after dinner and sat with the ladies, and after coffee walked with the company in the gardens, one of the young ladies having her arm within the other. She is neither handsome nor genteel, pert enough. He calls her Dido, which I suppose is all the name she has. He knows he has been reproached for showing fondness for her. I dare say not criminal. Hutchinson's attitude highlights Dido's position perfectly. She was well loved by her family, but as the daughter of a slave in 18th century England, she was never going to be accepted as their social equal. The fact is that when this portrait was painted, Britain's participation in the slave trade was at its height. 